Hello and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Madden and today I'm going to be taking you on a tour of Sketchbook 14. Yeah, let's just get into it. This is Sketchbook 14. Um, this sticker is by Burl Norville. Um, he is an incredible artist and a friend of mine and he made this really incredible painting. The painting itself is actually huge, but I really loved it and uh, I wanted the sticker. And then I thought the colors went really well with the sketchbook cover I went with. This is a flyer for an exhibition opening that I went to. Uh, I didn't participate in it, but I did enjoy the show. So it was a group show at the Z-Tai Collective, downtown Port Townsend, and 10% of the sales were gifted to Discovery Bay Wild Bird Rescue, which is really, really cool. So, Sketchbook 14, I did this in a video. It's gotten a little gungy since then, but I still really like it. I still think it's quite pretty. And uh, here are the rules that I... not rules, but like goals for this sketchbook. Um, and I thought I would go through them and uh, see how I did. Finish before the end of July. I definitely did that. Cut it kind of close, but I definitely did it. Draw in pen. I'm pretty sure I did some of that. I don't know how much I did. I can't remember, but I definitely did a little bit. At least a little bit. Do master studies. I don't think I did this. Um, I really, really think I dropped the ball on that one. I think I'm going to carry that goal over to the next sketchbook, though, because I do think it's an incredible tool for learning. I just didn't get around to it. Try interesting color palettes. I definitely explore color a little bit here, and definitely throughout this course of this sketchbook, I'm keeping an eye out for interesting color palettes in things around me. So to a certain extent, I do think I succeeded in that work on layouts. Yeah, I'd say I definitely... Sorry, I can hear a truck backing up. It's kind of quiet. If you can hear it, I'm sorry. Um, work on layouts. I definitely feel like I did do some pages with some really excellent layouts in this sketchbook. Other pages are just scribbly nonsense, but um, I definitely think there are a couple of uh, really nice pages in terms of layouts, so I think I did that. And the point of that goal was to kind of find a way to practice layouts in preparation for working on like comics and stuff. This seemed like a really good way to practice like um, panel layouts without actually having to tackle a comic right right now. Finish Mini Small's book, uh, The 30 Day Sketchbook Project, which I started in the previous sketchbook, got almost exactly halfway through and stopped, and I didn't touch that at all in this sketchbook. I did not do one itty bitty bit of it in the entire duration of the sketchbook. So that's going to carry over because I do want to finish that book. I, I think there are one or two that I'm going to skip because it's stuff I've tried before that I know I don't enjoy or don't get anything out of. Um, so it's even less of a commitment than it sounds like. And I just need to do it because I did enjoy it when I was doing it. So I'm going to carry that one over to my next sketchbook. Um, explore ideas in more depth. I think I did that to a certain extent. I definitely think I at least stuck my toe into doing that through like more iterative thumbnailing and things like that. Um, I'd say on and off, but yes, I definitely did some of that. Carry it with me. I absolutely failed with that. I didn't do that at all. And draw from life, which I've spelled draw F-O-M life. Yeah. Anyway, draw from life. Um, I think I think I did a little eensy weensy bit of that, but that might not have been in the sketchbook. That might have been somewhere else. But yeah, with that said, let's get into it. Uh, this is the page I did when I started the sketchbook with you guys. Um, I still like it quite a bit. I think they're nice. I think they're fun and silly. Um, I definitely feel like I would do a better job now, but that's a good thing. <laughs> that can only be a good thing. Oh, man. Feels like these were forever ago, to be honest. Uh, I really like this bird. I can't remember what kind of bird it is, but very cool. I really love the symmetry of that one. Um, and then this little comic I did, this tiny little like three panel, oh, hardly even a comic. I really like this. I think this is super pretty and super cute. And I think the flow from page to page is really, really good. Um, I genuinely love this. I also love how 
in here it's like really smooth colors, but then out here it's just lines. Genuinely think this is fantastic. This was planning for a commission I did for someone for their D&D &D character. So just scribbling out ideas really, really loosely, working out like colors for the outfit and stuff. This page I covered in orange paint, didn't know what to do with it, and eventually came back and uh, scribbled down this little guy. Um, this is from a photo reference, but I did it very, very loosely. I think I went in, mm, I might have done a little bit of sketching in a cola erase pencil, but a uh, red cola erase pencil, but I think most of it was done with just the um, magic pencil. And I think it's fun. I think it's like grungy and fun. I added the quote myself. Um, and I like it. <laughs> this one. This is my fairy who lives in a candy store. I like to put him in various different kinds of sock patterns that I think are cute and kind of remind me of like candy store aesthetics and candy wrapper aesthetics. And he's just lounging on a bottle of vanilla because in my mind the candy store he lives in also makes some candy in-house because that's how the candy store where I live works. And he wears like a little uh, clear cellophane wrapper as an outfit, which is both like very cute, but also uh, just kind of makes sense for where he lives. And then he's got a little little ribbon that he probably got from a little bag of candy. And then I did these. These are all done with my um, Marvy Le Pen pens and just layering the colors and stuff. And I really, really like how this page turned out. I think it looks really, really good. Um, I think the colors are really nice and really insane. And I like the layout. I, this took me actually quite a while. Another page with uh, Marvy Le Pens. So, oh man. Uh, I think I was just freehanding this with the straight in pen. This is obviously like a butterfly wing, and then these are some flowers. Um, and then I swatched them over here. And then this was, I don't know if I was like from my imagination or copying down a real plant in my life or from the internet. I have zero memory, but these were all of the colors I had at the time. I was really in a phase with them. And then I was swatching colors over each other because I took a risograph printing class. And these were all of the colors that the person teaching the class had for their machine. So yellow, orange, pink, purple, blue, green, and black. Um, and I swatched them both in like paint and in the pens. The paint obviously worked a little bit better. These were my... In the class we made like a little mini zine, the kind where you like fold it up. This is the zine that I made, just like drawing things really, really quickly. I think we only had about an hour to draw. Um, so drawing things really, really quickly, kind of from the internet mostly. And that's how it turned out in Rhizo, uh, which is really cool to see. It really changed a lot. We only printed in one color. Yeah, it was such an interesting class to learn about how Rhizo works. I did this. Um, these are two different pictures that I sort of smashed together. I almost like collaged them in a drawing. So yeah, and then I did like, this was a landscape that I broke down almost like a shell shape. Yeah, that is hard to say. Uh, this is like a photograph of a tree and a field that I broke down into almost like a cell shading style and colored it in, in like very flat colors. And then I added this sort of um, statue, which was cool. That was fun. Um, this is kind of meant to be like a, a blackboard. I did this on this page and it bled through. So I did sort of a blackboard and put little sticky notes on with like prompts. And I didn't use them, but I did make it. <laughs> this is my character Carbon, who I like to draw, but I'm not very good at drawing him. I never capture his likeness to my satisfaction almost ever. This is the first artist picnic I went to and I got a little flyer for it and I just loved the colors. So I swatched as many art supplies as I had with those colors. And I just, I love them. I still want to make like a painting with these colors because I think they're so fun together. And this is actually painted, at least as far as I recall, this was actually painted by Julie Reed, 
who was the person who organized the thing, and I just, I love it so much. It's so gaudy, but so pretty at the same time. This was from my Mermaid um, video, my first Mermaid video. I still like it, honestly. Like, it's not perfect, but I think it's quite charming, and I do think that the way I layered colors was nice. I think that I think that the, the colors hold up really well. And I did this again with the Marvili pens and just a light um, ink wash because I was still really, really into those pens. This was just a page full of random doodles, most of them from the internet. I can't remember if this is a photo from the internet or if I took a reference photo. I have no idea. Can't remember. This is actually a little house that I've walked by um, several times, and I've just always thought it is the cutest thing on the planet, so I drew that kind of from memory because it's so simple. But the rest of this is definitely from the internet, and then I added some swirlies in the background, and the thing I used to draw this is my fountain pen because I think my previous sketchbook had like really textured paper, and I couldn't use my fountain pen on it. But um, this one has like really smooth paper, so the fountain pen works really, really nice. And it had this really nice like sepia ink in it, so I wanted to use it. I like this hydrangea. That's pretty. Okay, so this is just a portrait of a random face on the internet because I wanted to draw a portrait. It's like a fun way to practice. Um, I like how this turned out quite a bit. And then the background is just magic pencil. This, I don't remember what supplies I used, but I, I have this like... I knit and crochet and I have this little orange stitch marker that's like plastic and then there's these little scissors that have a purple lid and somehow the little orange stitch marker got inside the transparent purple lid and I was like oh that looks like a little fish inside of a purple jellyfish and so I drew it. I think it's fun. I did these landscapes from photos. I I was re-listening to Blue Crown which is a really nice um, which is a really, really cool book. It's really kind of, I don't know, it's a, it's a little bit weird, but really incredible, like, interconnected world type book series. So I was listening to Blue Crown while I did these, and I really like these a lot. These are, these are based on photos, but just, I really like how I layered the colored pencil and the paint, and I think this was all done with leftover paint on my palette. Some of it might have been gouache. I can't quite remember. Yeah, I really, really like these. I think I did a great job. Like, not to toot my own horn, but I think these are great. I drew this guy just to uh, have fun. I think I was sick while this was ha while I drew this. I kind of drew him to like fill in space. These notes are. I had an idea for a zine where I did where I uh, like a, a zine of invasive plants. And I was writing down ideas for ones that I thought would be easy enough to make recognizable. Like, there are lots of invasive plants, but some of them can look like other plants, and even other plants that are native. And you don't want to encourage people to rip out the native plants when, you're, when they're trying to uh, rip out the invasive ones, right? So I was writing down ones that are, like, really, really recognizable and a problem in my area. And I thought it would be cool to, like, make the zines and then sort of disperse them um, for free among like the little lending libraries and stuff. I haven't done it, but I'm I'm still very open to the idea. I think that would be a fun project. This is me swatching my new Marvili pens. So back, if we go back, here we go. If we go back here, we can see I have, you know, a decent range of colors, but I got all of these ones, which almost doubled it, I'd say. And you can see how much more complete the color range is in this compared to the previous one. Um, I did not own the plain orange or brown or black. Um, you can see I wrote a note. So many colors, so beautiful. And then I bought some brand new Prismacolors in like really nice colors. And then uh, almost immediately discovered that I don't want to use Prismacolors anymore. So... I was flipping through this and I was like, what the actual hell is this? This is like examples of compositions that I was working on briefly and then I left it alone and I never came back to it and I can't even really remember how the exercise worked. So <laughs> um, this was just a guy who I thought had an interesting face and I wanted to draw it. Um, lots of like wrinkles and these really big dark eyes. 
and just a very, very distinctive face. I really like when people draw their art supplies. I think it's really cool. I don't really know why, but I just, I really, really enjoy it. So I try to do like a rainbow gradient, drawing all of the pens going across the page, and I really like it. I think it's really fun. I accidentally drew like three extra, but I kind of think it looks cool. So yeah, I really, really like this page. I think it's, I think it's a lot of fun. And it's a really cool way to see just all the colors next to each other. Here we have um, liquid graphite. This is the one that dries waterproof. It's basically like a graphite acrylic. So this is just a face from the internet. And I just went straight in with the liquid graphite. I didn't sketch for this beforehand. I just kind of built it up straight in with paint. So it's not like perfect. It's a little wonky, but I think it turned out okay. This is me just kind of trying to capture what the Aurora Borealis looked like where I was. It wasn't super like bright and it wasn't very colorful. It was like faintly, faintly green, but really it was more white. And it kind of swirled together from two different points towards like the center of the sky and made this sort of flower almost. So I tried to kind of capture that because I didn't do a very good job capturing it on my phone. Uh, it was just, it was very, very dark. And her eyes are just so much better at adjusting to the dark than um, cameras will ever be. So yeah, that's kind of how it looked to me uh, standing out in my yard at two in the morning. <laughs> I was a little art blocked this day. And so I just found some stuff to doodle. Like this kind of came out of my head. I think it was inspired by something, but I don't remember what. And then I did a Venus flytrap and then I thought it looked kind of like an eye. I really, really like this color combination of like the pale minty green and then the bright, bright red. I think that's a really good color combination. I actually painted these when it was like really late. I don't know why, but I do distinctly remember that it was just like weirdly late for me to be up and doing art. Writing down a list of paint colors I wanted. And then these images, I wanted to try and draw them with just the stuff that was in my pencil bag. So I was, I was very limited, but I think I did a pretty good job, especially this one. I think this one looks great. This one is pretty good too, all things considered. But this one I think is genuinely really cool looking. Initial thumbnail for my second mermaid painting where I tried the gouache and this was like my color thumbnail. Obviously the water's white here and it's black in the final because I used black paper but yeah that's what my color thumbnail looked like and as you can see really cute colors, very cute. Unfortunately they're not actually gouache, they are uh, watercolors with a little bit of white added which is not going to behave the same. Just thinking about stuff to paint, I wanted to paint crows. I haven't done a crow painting yet but I did enjoy sketching this a lot, and I do really like this page. I think the composition is quite good, and I like the mix of like very detailed crows with sort of like little shape crows and the more doodly stuff. I like it. I like it a lot. I like how it's very simple. It's just purple on purple, but it works. I think it works really well. Some thumbnails, most of which I still really like. This was a color palette idea for this painting idea that I had. I definitely want to paint this one. I think the rest of them are okay, but I really like this one. I like this one now that I've read the color description. With the color description, it actually sounds like a really nice painting, like a, a warm, medium, dark skin tone with like a warm undertone, dark, dark hair. Dark muted leaves with orangey red flowers. That sounds really, really nice. This was a sketch of someone else's art, but it was a sculpture. So they, I don't actually know that these were done by the same person, but they looked like they were done by the same person, but only one of them had a name attached and it's Pinterest. So who knows if that's actually the name of the person who made it. But I think that these are by Wendy uh, Mager and I thought they were really, really cool, and I wanted to draw them again with just the stuff that was in my pencil case. And again, I think I did a pretty good job. I actually quite like them. I think they're very cute. This is, I think the name is Starcatcher. So from G3 My Little Pony, which is the 
most beautiful design. Really like that. This was like a swatch page, and then I painted over it with leftover paint, and then I went over it with a sketch, and then I did gansai paints on top of it because they're a little opaque, and that's how I got that. And I, I like how the the colors layered over each other make it look. It's It's got a lot of depth that I really, really like. Yeah, I really like this one. Um, so this is like a brainstorming little like portable market kiosks. I don't know, for like two days I got stuck in the idea of like doing something like that, but uh, I currently think that that's dumb. <laughs> Not doing markets, but like biking there or whatever. This is a building that's like adapted from a photo I saw on the internet. It was originally a lighthouse, but uh, I shortened the tower so it would be more like a regular house. Because um, I thought it was really, really cute. I think I added like some... I don't remember if the brick was original or if the flower box... I don't think the flower box was originally part of that. Um, but I do think it's really, really cute. I, I just... I like drawing houses. And then I kind of extrapolated ideas for the back of the house purely from imagination. I did this while I was sick. I think this was the first piece of art I did while I was sick, and I was just so tired of not drawing, and it turned out really good, considering. And then I, right at the end, I just went and got orange on her face. So, a note about an art show that I want to go to in September. <laughs> Me freaking out about getting invited to do a show. An idea for a painting, like a little fish surrounded by blueberries. That sounded really, really cute in my head. I'd still like to do that, actually. That does sound adorable. This is a landscape in Ireland, I think. Scotland? Ireland? Can't remember. But I was at one of the artist picnics, and someone there had actually been there. And she showed me photos from her vacation there, or whatever. And that was really cool to see it from all these different angles and stuff. I really like how this turned out. I like how, like, I really like that simple but effective thing. And it's a hard thing to explain other than it's simple but very effective. This is the handle from a bag of cherries. Like a plastic bag of cherries, and I actually cut out some of them because I just loved the colors. These colors are amazing. This is what I mean when I say I kind of did work on color palettes, because look at that. Look at that. That's so freaking beautiful. So again, I like looked for all of my art supplies that were in this color palette. Like, come on. It's so, so pretty. So pretty. I, I still want to do something with this color palette as well. It's so great. Um, swatching some paints. I think these are the new paints I got. I think I just had some... No? No. I have no idea. I have no idea what paints these are, or why I was swatching them. Cannot remember some of the shapes from the packaging, like some motifs that I thought would go well with it. My little red demon pinup character, I thought he would look really, really good in that color palette. So I was doodling him. I like this one still a lot. I think it's really, really, I really love the pose and everything. Yeah, not a lot to say about this page, but um, I, I do like, I really like that. Uh, ooh, this is the first, this is the first kind of iteration of the bird painting I did. There was something there, and then I iterated on it, and I iterated on it, and I iterated on it, and I had other ideas inspired by birds, and I finally landed on this composition, and this is what ends up in the final painting. And it's just, yeah. You can see, like, I got here, from here, through all of this. I, I really thought that I was going to go with, like, a circle, but nope. I ended up with more of, like, a figure eight or infinity type layout, and I'm so happy with that painting. I did some other birds. I really like these. I was hearkening back to the bears that I doodled earlier. I was thinking about this hoodie I have that's a Grateful Dead hoodie and it's got bears on it. Playing around with that. Never went anywhere with it, but I do like that I explored it a little bit more before just, you know, tossing it to the side. Vague architectural doodles. I don't know anything about, like, actually doing architectural doodles, but I do look at, like, 
I look at blueprints sometimes and I look at historical houses and I'm just fascinated by houses. So this is just doodling ideas. I was a little un still kind of unwell when I was feeling this. I couldn't really draw. I was having trouble, like, clearly I was having trouble, like, writing. But yeah, just writing down, like, I got, like, the vaguest idea down, and then I wrote down notes to clarify things, because I didn't want to lose the idea, even though I was totally not in a, a space to actually make it. Various painting ideas, thumbnails, I like a lot of these. I like this one, I like this one. I think this one's okay. I think it could look really, really pretty, but I think it could also be incredibly boring. <laughs> love this idea. I love, I need to paint this. This is so cute. I love this idea for him. Oh my God. Him in the little, the little heart boots, the heart cowboy boots. So cute. Notes on stuff I wanted to do for my studio when I was doing the studio makeover. Uh, an artist I wanted to look up for some reason or another. A color palette I found online that I thought was good. A cat. I was still feeling it, so so tired, so tired. Um, another color palette, it was like a rainbow, but each of the colors had been blended into the light blue background a little bit, and I thought it was really, really nice, and I still think it's really, really pretty. So I should, I should do a painting where there's rainbow, but the... There's a light blue underpainting under all of it. That would be really, really cool. There's this indoor-outdoor cat where I live. That cat scared me so badly because it was the exact same color as the street, and it's really small, and it r was super friendly, and it ran straight up to me jingling and meowing, and I hadn't, I had not noticed it until it was, like, right next to me and started running at me. <laughs> it scared me really badly. But it was the tiniest, most friendliest cat, and it had this ruffly collar with a bell on it. I thought it looked like a little little clown cat, so I doodled that. Some birds I found a picture of online. I really like these. Again, very simple and effective. Much looser than I generally go. I think I only really achieve this looseness when I'm working from a photo, to be honest. I don't know. I like this, and it's the kind of thing where it's like, I'm not sure if I want to actually implement this in my art, like in my finished nice work, or if I just want to enjoy it as a quick way of like exploring ideas, because I definitely enjoy it that way. So I'll, I'll enjoy it like that for now. I'll figure it out later. <laughs> um, I got a beautiful, enormous antique steamer trunk, and I was just doodling some of the details in um, Coleris pencil and pen, and I really, again, the Marvy Le pens, love them. I really love this page. I love this page. I don't know why, but I absolutely love it. I think it's beautiful. This page I did much, much later. I didn't date this one, but I did this one a lot later, really right around when I finished the sketchbook. And I love this page as well. I love all of the colors and all the little things. I love this pencil that goes all the way across. I think it's great. I think this page is a ton of fun. Like I said, I love when people illustrate their art supplies, and I actually think I did a really good job. Um, it's like, oh, I have that, and I recognize that, and I recognize that, and I recognize that, um, and it just makes makes my brain happy. Ooh, these are really loose, but these are kind of vague ideas for things. Painting ideas, I don't know when or if I'll get to them. They're very illegible, but there are, like, figures moving around each other in, like, circles notes to myself that don't really make sense <laughs> out of context. I swatched both of these pages completely covered in my uh, handmade watercolors, and then I was like, well, what do I do with these pages now? Because they're so dark. And I did irises. The first one is in colored pencil, just straight colored pencil. And I do use it much more like oil pastel. I just like really grind it into the page. Um, and then this one is the uh, Kurotaki Gansai Tambi paints, and I really like I really like these. I think these are really, really pretty. These are nice too, but these are so good. This was for my second artist picnic. I showed up, and I was the first one there, so I took some time and doodled the view from where I was sitting. It's a little compressed, but um, otherwise I think it's pretty good. And I was just using whatever I had, so we've got like a neon tree. <laughs> 
Uh, I think I added, yeah, I added some color when I got home just to make it a little more legible because I didn't have watercolors with me. But um, when I got home, I added, I added a little color. More doodly ideas. I really like this one where there's a fox um, biting his throat. I like that one. And just general ideas to explore. Birds, flowers, stained glass, just things that were on my mind. This is like a a swan that's kind of crashed, um, dead. I don't know. Very cheerful stuff. Um, I had this idea for like a really insane fireplace with like wood mosaic going out onto the wall around it. I was looking at the Art Nouveau architecture books that I have and just full of ideas. And this was like the first really loose one I did. And then I did this one the next day where I kind of refined it a little bit and rendered it in a little bit more not detail but like I feel like I captured the essence of the various materials better. I didn't think to add fire at first and then I added it last minute like over all of the other dark stuff and I still think it looks really good. I actually really like that little bit of fire. I think it's quite effective. Another idea I had, I haven't painted it yet, but persimmons are just beautiful plants. The persimmon fruit is beautiful, but the various flowers are also beautiful. They're so symmetrical and square. I really like that. And then the colors are stunning. Oh my god, they're so beautiful. So I had like this idea of like two lovers like lounging in a cloud of persimmons. <laughs> and I'd really like to paint that at some point. I just love these flowers. I love how symmetrical they are. Um, more ideas for birds. I I have no idea if you can see that or not. It's not super dark. Um, various hummingbird poses. And then I had this, I have these four watercolor canvases and I was thinking of making each one into a bird pointing at a different corner so that they could be arranged together pointing towards the center. I thought that would be a really cool idea. And so this is like me planning out what kinds of birds would be in it. I wanted it to be birds native to my local area, or at least birds that live in my local area, and kind of like songbird type birds. I haven't decided yet. Um, another, speaking of birds, another waxwing I did. This one's very, very loose using the Gansai paints over a page that I covered in paint previously and then using pencils really loosely. I like this one a lot. I don't think this is a cedar waxwing though. I think this might be a bohemian waxwing. There are like three different kinds of wax wings and they're kind of hard to tell apart in photos. So if you aren't an expert, you can be like, oh, here's a picture of the bird I want to draw. And then like you get halfway through and you're like, oh, no, that's that's a different kind of wax wing. Damn it. Um, these are all of my old color swatches for my Prismacolor pencils because I kind of gutted my collection of all of the not light fast ones. And so this is no longer an accurate representation of the color order of my pencils. This is me swatching all my most used colors, and I will eventually be swatching my new pencils next to this so that I can uh, kind of gauge how good of a dupe I got. These are all of my new um, Grumbacher Academy paints swatched out. Very beautiful colors. Very, very beautiful. I really like these pages. I like how they're like kind of similar themes, but they're not the same. These are both from photos. This was like a light sketch that I filled in with watercolor and then I did colored pencil on top, like really, really heavy colored pencil. Um, and I really like it. And then this is, this is my Marvy Lee pens. And then just a little bit of colored pencil in the background for the light blue. But I really, really like, I really like this. I think it's really, really cool. A page full of birds that I thought were cool and I wanted to draw. I really like when people will layer <laughs> sketches in different colors over each other. This is not the most masterful attempt at that, I will say. So I, I like this page better, but <laughs> it's okay. It's fine. Um, this is the downtown art walk I went to in Seattle to see Burl Norville's art at. He was doing a show. It was like the opening night of his art show. And we went down there to see him and see his art. And it was a great time. So I tucked in my flyer I got for that, and my fairy ticket. And then just like some doodles of bleeding hearts and an idea for a fairy. I think it's a cute idea. And then these are the last couple of pages that I did um, 
with you in my finish my sketchbook with me video. So just some nice flowers. It's always nice to practice flowers because they're so complicated, but you also don't have too much pressure because they're so organic and each one is a little bit different that a little bit of inconsistency is okay. So it's like a low pressure way to really push yourself. Really like how this orchid turned out, actually. I think that's really, really pretty. And then we've got my beautiful little seascape. I like to imagine this is somewhere like beautiful, but kind of cold, like Scotland or something with the thistles. <laughs> yeah, I actually quite like this. Like there are definitely things that I would change if it was a finished piece, but I really like this. I think it's really, really cute. I like all the texture and all the different colors, and I really like this yellow edge to the sky. I think that's very nice. And I like these rocks. I don't know why, but these little rocks are just really nice. I really like them. And I really like how these white clovers turned out. They're illustrating white objects is like difficult, but when you get it right, it's actually really cool because they interact with light so uniquely compared to things that have their own color. And capturing that, when you capture it just right, is very, very cool. And then, uh, the end. That's all of Sketchbook 14 from April 15th to July 23rd. It was a wild ride. <laughs> it took, honestly, longer than I thought it would. But it's done. And that means I can move on to Sketchbook 15, which as you can tell is absolutely gorgeous. But I'd like to thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please like, subscribe, hit the bell notification so you actually know when I upload a video, and uh, leave a saucy little comment down below. Maybe let me know which page is your favorite, and I will see you next time. Bye.